Uh, speaking of nostalgia, uh, IITM has had a glorious history of about 55 years. Professor Ajit Kolar and Mr. Kumaran Sadashivam came together, who are both alumni and historians, came together in July to trace this heritage for Alumni Day. By popular demand, they are back now. May I please welcome Mr. Kumaran to deliver the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen gathered in this hall, greetings to the. My talk is about IIT's history, which as you know, extends over a period of years 52 plus 3. To cover this, I have minutes 15, possibly 20. It's a challenging task and at terabytes per second I could go transporting you. But there's a certain sameness that permits me to give you a leisurely bird's eye view. You will see it is to do with traditions. So let us go through the institute story without any ado. First, a few words about the 1950s, the decade in which was born our IITM. A simple, happy world it seems to have been free of problem. Gadgets were relieving people in different parts of the world of tedium. Appliances are plenty. Folks were beginning to have them. No wonder people were happy. Suddenly, they were able to have things that they had never dreamed of having and they couldn't believe their luck. There was, too, a wonderful simplicity of desire. It was the last time that people would be thrilled to own a toaster or waffle iron. If you bought a major appliance, you invited the neighbors round to have a look at it. When I was about four, my parents bought an Amana Stormor refrigerator, and for at least six months, it was like an honored guest in our kitchen. I'm sure they'd have drawn it up to the table at dinner if it hadn't been so heavy. When visitors dropped by unexpectedly, my father would say, Oh Mary, is there any iced tea in the Amana? Then to the guests he'd add significantly, there usually is, it's a store more. Oh a store more, the male visitor would say and raise his eyebrows in the manner of someone who appreciates quality cooling. We thought about getting a store more ourselves, <coughs> but in the end we went for a Filco sure cool. Alice loved the e Ease Glide vegetable drawer and you can get a full quart of ice cream in the freezer box. That was a big selling point for Wendell Jr., as you can imagine. They'd all have a good laugh at that and then sit around drinking iced tea and talking appliances for an hour or so. No human beings had ever been quite this happy before. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Well, what a different world it was. The Australia Miss Jean McKenzie describes in Australian Paradox is a place of boundless prosperity, full employment, wholesomeness and infinite optimism. In 1959-60, to 60, Australia was the third wealthiest country on the planet. I hadn't realized this, exceeded only by the United States and Canada. But what was particularly interesting was how modest were the components of material well-being then. With admiration bordering on amazement, Ms. Mackenzie notes that by the end of the 1950s, three quarters of city dwellers in Australia had a refrigerator and almost half had a washing machine. There wasn't yet enough electricity in most rural areas to run big appliances, so they didn't count. Nearly every home in the nation, she went on, had at least one radio, gosh. And most homes have other electrical appliances such as vacuum cleaners, irons and electric jugs or to live in a world in which the ownership of an electric jug is a source of pride. Mechanical aids help the American housewife to do her household duties with cheer and without loss of time. The picture above is that of a kitchen in a farmer's house, equipped with a radio set, a telephone and other modern appurtenances. So in some parts of the world, the joy was only vicarious. You might find it hilarious that passengers traveled routinely in the 50s on ships precarious 
even though air travel was no longer vagarious. It was a different world then. Reports were coming in of abominable snowmen. Abominable snowmen were being reported. The political officer, Xiang Frontier Division, NEFA, Mr. Chakma, said, today a hospital compounder arriving from Machuka brought news yesterday that a Bokar tribesman hunting the Siban, a kind of wild bison, had killed an abominable, uh, an abominable snowman a fortnight ago near Tadadige. It is said the creature measures 10 feet, pure white in color, and has scanty hair. The outpost at Tadadige, near the Tibetan frontier, has been instructed over the wireless to investigate. The outlines of our country states, as they were then, to us they appear misshapen. Yet to be reorganized were they, boundaries redrawn on the basis of languages spoken. It was a very different world, it is true, but deja vu too. Professor M. S. Thakur, Director of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research today, said that water power and solar energy, which were in abundance in India, should be properly utilized to place the country in an advantageous position. Need to develop solar energy. In 1956, believe it would you. A familiar landmark opening at a nearby venue. Front view of the Gandhi Memorial Mandap in Raj Bhavan, Gindi, which has just been completed and will be declared open on January 27th by Mr. C. Rajagopalachari. Then IIT was established. The campus was a forested place. Classes were held without in the initial phase and development proceeded within at a giddy pace. Oh, those were exciting days. At first, we imagine the roads they came, just about each one was given a name. A landmark uh, came up, a landmark that to be IIT symbol would lay claim, though in subsequent years, it did not look quite the same. Hostels were built, first among them Krishna and Kaveri. Department, uh, uh, department buildings did rise, such as HSB, which was completed in 1963. In 67, we got the Central Library. The new residents of the new campus heard at night a lot of eerie, scary sounds. those wolves or were they hounds? Zounds. It appears that everywhere is out of bounds. When all the infrastructure was in place, IIT Madras began to work at a great pace. Like a rocket shooting off into outer space. As though a starting gun had been fired, started a race. There was a sandwich system that students did dread. Now, this sandwich had nothing to do with bread. It was about entire weeks spent at the workshop, the hands raw and red. No sooner did the students come to the hostel than they fell into bed. Spectator 1. Is this cricket? Spectator 2 says, of course, don't you know that about the decision of the Imperial uh, Cricket Conference that the batsman must expect a ball from any direction at any time? A batsman, a student, looks around left and right in a bewildered fashion as physics, fluid mechanics, machine design and maths bowl simultaneously. 
Applied mechanics and other subjects are fielders. Umpire Sen looks on in this 1963 cartoon. The sandwich system went out of mode, but not without effort was it traversed the academic road along which the scholars strode. Continuous assessment, quizzes, periodicals, surprise tests, quite a load. Thus was set in place the entire academic tradition. Teaching, learning, assessment of the student's condition, calculation of grades, GPAs and G CGPAs, multiplication, addition, division, culminating in the convocation. Another early tradition was that of excellence in research. Using the latest equipment did we search for solutions to problems that made the world stagger and lurch. Very high did our standards perch. The rest of the story is all about tradition. <laughs> It would seem that we are traditional people. So many traditions in this campus filled with banyan, palm and people. Traditions in swimming, games, track and field, the chase of the steeple. Traditions of extracurricular activities, cultural, literary, entertainment that makes you chortle. Traditional people are we, but given somewhat to changing names frequently. We started Cultural Week uh, long back, which became Mardi Gras. Is it Sarang now? Uh, remind me. Tomorrow, what will it be? As in previous years, the science fair did not appear to be crowded, though the participants hopefully claim that the standard was much higher this time. The exhibits centered around the logical truth value creator built by Jacob Thomas and Mohana Krishnan. Science fair decades ago, open house for a while, Shastra briefly known as pragma, that we should const constantly rename everything must be a dogma. Why we might even change rho to sigma. This rena renaming tradition is an enigma. Most of our traditions have remained steady as evening tea. A textbook example is afforded by film club and OAT. Every Saturday, the entire institute converges there at 7.30. Did not someone pithily remark that in the open air theatre dwells the spirit of IIT? But the old alumnus recalling some traditions is stricken with nostalgia. The outdoor club treks far and near. The ham club, conversations with Australia, Antarctica, Georgia. Are all these traditions still there? Uh, still here. The, the memory is sufficient to give him neuralgia. Once ubiquitous, the punched card. <laughs> that close relation of the loom jacquard. Traditionally, notices were written on it. Each one improved by viewers, though it was near the hostel guard. Now to find a punched card is almost impossible, very, very hard. Mess bills, they complained, were awfully high. The coupon system, they cried, let's give it a try. Coupons for lunch and dinner, for breakfast and tea, for appalams and sauce and even chutney. As one enters, one sees plates in a stack and tables arranged so as to form a track. A track you follow at every repast. Service, sir, is now a thing of the past. You pick up a plate, a spoon, and curds. Then follow the queue, rasam words, moving rasam words. At the end of the line, reckoning begins. Coupons torn off and dropped into tins. Coupons have come in, thrown service out, as one grows thinner and the servers grow stout. To new, to new heights now, many mess bills have flown. The upward trend into a habit has grown. The coupon system, is a struggle in vain, 
Mess bills are still a source of migraine. Let's accept facts. It needs little gumption to realize that a mess bill is an unabounded function. There was once a tradition of poetry and rhyme on this campus. Oh yes, there was such a time. And there lies the explanation of this golden history's poetical paradigm. It is but a continuation of one of the traditions of our own IATM. With the sum of IATM's history, ladies and gentlemen, we have de dealt. It is now time to unfasten the seatbelt. Into the present and the future doth the past melt. And I offer to you, for your patience, my thanks, heartfelt. <laughs>